Hello, and welcome to this episode of Grace Filled Play TV. In this episode, we are going to talk about Christian body image. Is it a thing? If it is a thing, does it matter? And if it matters, what are we supposed to do about it? We are going to walk away with three truths and three tips that you can start applying today. So why did I feel like this video was necessary? Well, I have to tell you, every single day I get messages from women just like you, women who love Jesus and want to serve him with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength, and yet they are completely distracted and overwhelmed with things related to their body. They may not be going out and serving God the way that they would like to because of embarrassment, or they may be skipping events for fear of certain foods to be there. And so we really want to infiltrate our minds with God's truth about Christian body image so that we can move forward and be effective in his kingdom. So the first truth that I want to share with you, and it may seem pretty obvious, but it's really great to talk about, is that our bodies were never meant to be the focus. Our bodies are a blessing from God. We're the only creatures created in his image that allow us to think creative thoughts, to imagine, to invent, to feel things on a certain level emotionally to touch and to create. And these unique things are totally characteristics that God gave us. However, anything that is awesome and amazing can also be turned into an idol. Now, an idol is anything that we place before God in our lives. And oh, I know it's humbling to think of that because it's so easy to put things before God. But the body is definitely something that I see frequently taking first place in the lives of women, including myself. And that's exactly what the enemy wants. He wants our vision to be looking out at the horizontal and not the vertical, but the Lord. He wants us to be comparing ourselves to others and even to ourselves in previous seasons of life, rather than focusing on what God has for us here and today. So yes, number one truth is that our bodies were never meant to be the focus. They are a gift from God. The second thing that we want to remember is that your body is a vehicle. Now, I don't want you to think I'm going to tell you to only eat food for fuel because that's not the truth of the scripture. God has certainly blessed us with an abundance of tasty, wonderful things, and we'll be having feasts with him uh, when we're in heaven. However, ultimately, your body is meant to help you do his will. <laughs> this means using it and treating it in a way that allow you to continue to be moving forward with his call on your life. So let's compare it to a vehicle. <laughs> now we've seen, uh, or we know those people in our neighborhoods who spent all weekend buffing out every little fingerprint on their car. And that car would have taken, right, a greater place in their life than maybe would be ideal, right? If that person were serving Jesus, he may, <laughs> possibly, right? We don't know, but he may challenge them to bring their car back uh, on the priority list. But however, just going around with a car or vehicle that is totally unmaintained would also not be, be glorifying to God. And the same thing goes for our bodies. We don't need to spend so much time being healthy that it takes on a life of its own, but we also don't want to completely neglect that which he has given us. So looking at your body as a vehicle, as the way that you get out into the world to serve him can help you have a great perspective on where that balance lives. The third truth that I want you to know, and you've probably read this before, is that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So yeah, we don't want to make our bodies too much of a priority. We want to treat them like, you know, a vehicle that we want to run well consistently without idolizing them. But we also need to remember that they are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, where did, why did people in the Old Testament go to the temple? They went there to meet with God. <laughs> uh, your body is now the very place that you can meet with God on a daily basis. And this is why Paul instructs us to take care of our bodies like the temple of God, to treat our bodies like a living sacrifice so that those choices that we make reflect the truth that God is in fact living within us, right? Not spending a crazy amount of time making sure everything is perfect because this is just the external, right? It's not the heart that he cares about, but also not letting it go because we feel like the only thing that matters is the spirit. 
So think about that, temple of the Holy Spirit. However, the key is to remember that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Regardless of what your scale or your blood work say, today is a fresh day. And you can start to take care of yourself in little ways that glorify God without it overtaking your life. All right, so we talked about three truths from the scripture about Christian body image. Now I want to give you three practical tips to help you line yourself up with what the Bible says. Uh, the first thing is that you want to guard your heart and your mind. Uh, we cannot even walk down the street or into a store without being bombarded with negative messages about our bodies. Since having a little girl, my mind has been so tuned to that and honestly quite disgusted by the way that we are told we are supposed to look. It breaks my heart to think of that moment when she will realize that she may not meet this perfect standard of the world around her. Because guess what? Nobody does. And we need to guard our hearts and our minds from those negative messages. This means possibly watching what you watch on TV, not allowing that negativity to come in, canceling magazine subscriptions, staying away from friends who seem to sort of drain more from you than they give. Now, there might be a season in life where you're more solid in this area where you can go back and then minister to them. But sometimes we just have to cut ourselves off from the friends that are always talking about weight and body image, the things that will distract us and make us feel like we're either missing out or we should be doing something different. So you put the safeguard in place just like you would if you had any other struggle so that you can protect your mind from the negativity and your heart from really taking on those truths as if they were um, something that like you needed to own. We also need to affirm the truth. So we're keeping the garbage out, or at least at arm's length as best that we can, but we need to proactively affirm the truth of God. That you're beautiful in his sight, that he has engraved you on the palm of his hand, that he knit you together in your mother's womb. Now, if, if you're feeling really resistant to me saying that, it's just a sign that the world's messages have settled into you and there's a little bit of a battle going on there between the flesh and the spirit. But keep bringing in the truth and it will start to wash your mind with it. The truth of the word that it's a gentle and quiet spirit that is in great value to the Lord. That our goal is to make others feel really great about themselves to encourage others, right? Not to build ourselves up and be the hottest one in the room and make all the other women feel bad. No, no, no. We want to be the ones that when someone meets with us, they walk away and they feel amazing. They feel loved, they feel heard, they feel known, and they feel really valuable to the Lord. That is what it's all about. So we want to guard our hearts and affirm the truth that it's not about us. Our bodies are a vehicle, right? They're a gift from God. They are the temple of the Holy Spirit, but they're never meant to take first place in our lives. All right. The third thing we want to do is to remember to serve one another in love. And that's Galatians 5.16. The verse is talking about the law and circumcision or uncircumcision. Does doing all of these things perfectly the way they're supposed to be, is that the most important thing? No, 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 Paul says, the most important thing ever is to serve one another in love. And that is truly the model that Jesus set for us. The word says that he wasn't the most beautiful, right, person that would be um, described as someone who would draw others to him just because of his perfection um, in a worldly way, right, in his appearance. No, but it was the love that he had for others that made him the most beautiful spirit and person to ever walk the face of the earth. And the same can go for us as well. The person who serves and loves is beautiful. And that is the one who is people are going to invite to be part of their lives. It's going to give you an opportunity to minister and to help others and to ultimately get your mind off of yourself. Now, listen, I get that these are hard messages to swallow. While I've been walking in food freedom for a while, I will say that uh, body image woes are the first thing to pop up when life gets a little well, out of control. I would say that body image is kind of my preferred problem. Things get a little wacky or maybe I don't know what's going to happen. Well, 
I can manage my body image or I can think about how I need to lose weight or I can say negative things about myself, right? It might not be about something else, but somehow that body image, when things go a little awry in the rest of my life, it's going to be the first thing that I focus on. But God has allowed that to be an indicator in my life. When I'm so just dead set on thinking about these things, chances are that there's some avoidance going on in my life or that I'm not filling my heart and mind with the truths of God, that I'm not, right? I'm not guarding my heart and mind and that I'm not focused on serving one another in love. So it's not going to be an overnight transformation, but by taking one purposeful step forward, by refusing a negative thought that comes in, by going out and putting yourself out there and being vulnerable, even though you feel like you need to lose weight first, by doing those little things, it will start to change your heart and your mind. And ultimately, you will feel like a beautiful Jesus girl. So I hope that helps you, this fresh perspective on Christian body image. If you have any questions, feel free to post below or let me know what points stuck out most to you. Thanks. Bye-bye.